Hi, my name is Cassie Brider, and you're watching Empowered Trans Woman. Today's video is one of the most important videos that I think I can record, and unfortunately, it's going to be one of the hardest to watch. So please bear with me. You're going to detect an urgency to my voice. I am not angry. I am feeling really impassioned about something really important. If you're the parent of a trans kid, please listen up. If you're the parent of a trans kid, please stay with me. And this is going to be a little bit of a hard watch, but I need you to stay engaged. In the last couple of days, I spoke to, and I've done a lot of marketing in my life, so this is one of the hats that I wear. In the last couple of days, I spoke to a person who needs a website done, and I told them that I could do it for $2,000, and they didn't bat an eye, and they're going to move forward with it. Also, in, in the last couple of days, I had somebody reach out to me about gender transition coaching, which is something else that I do. And as a gender transition coach, I am not cheap, and this person heard what I uh, could do for them, and they decided to go ahead and engage my coaching services. My rates are listed on my website, and they're pretty transparent. This person didn't have any issue with moving forward. At the same time, I have an acquaintance who's a gender therapist, very qualified, with years of experience, and they are conveying to me how difficult it is to get their parents to engage with a gender therapist. There's all this hemming and hawing, there's all these questions, there's all this hesitation, and their rates are extremely affordable. And this has my blood boiling, and I'm trying to somehow come to grips with the fact that we seem to be so cavalier when it comes to business needs, when it comes to retail purchases, but we seem to be so reluctant when it comes to the health and well-being of our children. So what is the problem? What is the holdback? What is the reason why? And I try to put myself in the shoes of the parent, and I am a parent of three kids. So one of the things I thought about was when my son turned 16, I taught him how to drive, or I had been teaching him how to drive, when he turned 16, he got his learner's permit. When he turned 17, I had to buy him a car. Now I have purchased cars for myself in the past, and I've always been really eager and uh, participatory in the process because I enjoy buying high ticket items for myself. I like treating myself to something that I like. This was nothing like that. Buying a car for my son was a completely different experience. Uh, what do I get out of it? What's possibly in it for me? I'm laying down thousands of dollars, and it's not something for me. What do I get out of it? Now my son is going to be driving out there. I'm going to be worried, sick, whether or not he's going to be in an accident. None of this is helping me. I'm not going to be enjoying the car. So why would I do it? Now, of course, I understand that as a good parent, I have to do it. So I go to the, to the dealerships, and I speak to the people who are trying to sell a car. But the whole time... I'm just carrying this weight of, I don't want to do this. Ultimately, I did buy a car for my son. I eventually discovered what's my why, what's my reason that motivates me to buy my son a car. Yes, of course, I love my son. I want him to be happy. But why am I doing it for me? And one of the reasons why I did it for me is because I get to keep my good parent card. I really, really value my good parent card. I have been a good parent. I've been graded well as a parent, and I want to keep that average going. I don't want my son to throw in my face that I've done poorly by him, and that matters to me as a parent. And it might be petty, and you might think I'm a bad human, but it's the truth. Also, he does need the car. He needs the car because he has a part-time job in the summers and because he needs to get to college and back, so it's a need for a family. So the family needs the car, the extra car, so that he can go. But So I was able to find a point of comfort for me where this is something that works for me individually. And so at that point, I was much more eagerly engaged in the process. I'm thinking of the reasons why a parent might not want to engage a gender therapist for their child or might be reluctant or might be kind of dragging their feet in engaging a gender therapist for their child. And so here was what I thought. One of the things is, it's not your pain, is it? It's it, just like the car wasn't going to be for me. This is not your pain. When I speak to a person in transition, and that's my audience, I generally speak to girls, to, to women who are in transition, they've been carrying their pain all their lives. They're on fire when they come speak with me. You're not on fire. Your child is. And I don't know if you know it. Because it's so easy to get distracted by narratives like, 
well, kids are resilient and it's a phase and they're going to get over it. Do you know what the suicide attempt rate is among trans kids? It's over 40%. I think it's 41.2%. It's very high. This is an alarming situation and not the fact that they're trans. That's not the alarming part, but the fact that they've waited until now to tell you the fact that this is a point that's crucial where you have to take action. My words are going to fail, and I hope that I don't lose you, but it's important that you stay with me. What do you get out of this? If you engage with a gender therapist, is your gender therapist going to make your kid cisgender? Are they going to make this thing go away? No, they won't. So that's another reason why you might not want to do it. You didn't want this thing on your lap. Now here it is, and you would rather it go away. This person is not going to make it away go. They'll probably ex exacerbate it. They'll probably bring it more forward into your life, and you're going to have to deal with it. Yes, they will, because this is a reality that can't be avoided. But it needs to be navigated. It needs to be navigated so that your kid can find comfort and can find their path in life. And that's what a gender therapist is for, to deal with all these feelings, to deal with all the shame that society ascribes to trans people, to deal with all the agony that the kid has been carrying inside, one of the key things that I see with queer people is that the thing that's wrong with us is not that we're queer. The thing that's wrong with us is the fact that we're uh, addicted to alcohol or drugs or gluttony or some other kind of vice that we use as a palliative, as a self-medicine to escape the shame or, or whatever that we carry because we're trans. And that's what ends up wrecking our lives. And the trick is to fortify your child in such a way that they, they're not going to fall into those traps, but they're going to stand tall and proud as a trans person, own it and, and face life in their, in their full glory and have a joyful life. That's what you have to look forward to. So what do you get? Well, you don't get a cisgender child. Your kid is the way that they are. If your child is left-handed, they're going to stay left-handed. If your child is tall, they will continue to be tall. If your child is transgender, they will continue to be transgender. You're not going to fix them, and that was never the point. But you and the child are going to find a way to navigate this so that they have a, an active, happy, productive adulthood. And so that your bond as a parent and child stays intact. Another thought that you might have is ignore it and it'll go away. It's so easy to think that, right? Just do nothing, and this will all disappear by itself. I, um, this, I'm, I'm filming this in the middle of lockdown, and I, I see the person in the White House telling everybody, ignore it and it will go away. This will all be done by summer. Meanwhile, the, the cases are mounting and the deaths are mounting. Ignoring it will not make it go away. It's important to be proactive in the face of a new situation in the face of a challenge in order to handle it effectively in order to protect your loved ones. This is a situation like that. It's shocking to me that it's so easy to sell a $2,000 website and it's so goddamn hard to get a parent to engage the services of a gender therapist for a lot less. I think that we tend to minimize the problem. I think that a lot of us are thinking, well, the child is resilient. The child will work it out. The child is watching YouTube videos and they'll sort themselves out. Maybe. But is that your job as a parent to just kind of hope for the best? What if they don't? This is your child's well-being. Isn't it worth a few hundred dollars in order to get yourself a trusted professional to steer your child towards better happiness? This is important. Your child's well-being is important. Don't hem and haw. Seek a gender therapist, whoever you trust, and engage their services. This is the first and foremost thing you need to do, other than, of course, respect your child's name and pronouns and give them your love. I'm going to end off. I hope I didn't piss you off too much. I do this for you. I do this because I care. I'll talk to you on the next one.